I love meat. <clears throat> and because I love meat, I want my children and grandchildren to be able to eat it. At the moment, it doesn't look like this realistic. In order to explain how I know this and talk about what we can do, I want to take you a couple of years into the past. In 2011, I was working in a popular grill restaurant here in Munich, and at that point I was not thinking much about meat consumption yet. Even talk much of my work revolved around meat. I was responsible for the grill, which was one of the restaurant's main attraction. Over time, I realized that most of our customers ordered an unbelievable amount of T-bone steaks, entrecot, roast beef and fillets. And every evening, I witnessed the typical cliché of a large group of men going by the grill, making what you would qualify as manly sounds and comments of approval. For them, the pure amount of meat they ate was some sort of a status symbol. In the meantime, I began to wonder what happens to the rest of the animal. What is left over and why do these parts not make it to the menu? Soon we start to buy from local farmer and I learn from them what happens to the rest. When you buy from local farmer, you generally buy packages of mixed animal parts. So we frequently ended up with a quarter of a cow in our kitchen and had to figure out what to do with it. The popular parts like steaks and fillets were easy to use and also the, the cuts we stewed for a couple of hours like upper shell or calf went over quite well with our restaurant guests. The challenge was to sell parts like heart, liver, tongue, bone marrow, They are unpopular, but if you prepare them right, they are delicious. So my challenge was to guide people's attention and appetite toward these parts of the animal, which have been wrongly forgotten, and put them on the grill along with the steaks. I tried everything I could. I put them on the daily special. I coached the waiting staff to advertise them. I told everyone who would listen what it actually means to eat the whole animal. I suggested dishes such as roasted bone marrow with caramelized onions, grilled bread with herb butter. Doesn't this sound delicious? It even looks delicious. Indeed, the customers got excited, but only until I told them which part of the animal was in front of them. Then, They went back to, no thanks, but do you also have Philly? When I left the restaurant, I made it my mission to show people that the way they are looking at buying and consuming meat is wrong without telling them they should stop eating meat altogether. Remember, I'm not a militant vegan. I love meat, but we need to realize we eat too much meat, and this applies to almost all of us who eat meat. And what's more, most of us eat meat for reasons they are not rational and sometimes not even conscious. The truth is, daily meat consumption is neither good for our personal health nor for the health of our planet. According to a study by the World Wildlife Fund in 2014, 14, sorry, um, every German can produce nearly 800 kilograms less of CO2 if he or she completely dropped meat from their diet. This is much as a round-trip flight from Munich to Hamburg generates per person. But you don't need to go to extreme. How about cutting our meat consumption in 
half. That would still mean 400 kilogram less of CO2, which is already an improvement. On average, meat-based meals produce more CO2 than vegetarian meals. But this is not only due to farting cows. But mainly, due to the processes are involved in producing each piece of meat, what means hundreds of liters of water to produce and feed the cattle, as well as the emissions for animal and food transport, for example. And don't forget that 80% of agricultural area are actually used to livestock feed. To make things worse, our population is growing fast. And the amount of people who are demanding more meat is growing even faster. Without a fundamental change in our diet, it won't be long before it becomes impossible to feed us all. In fact, I think we have two options. If we continue down this road, the time will come where all of us have to completely stop eating meat. Our agricultural system will collapse under the growing pressure and we will not only have problems to producing meat, but also any kind of food at the necessary scales. The alternative is to reason with and to regulate our meat consumption. So, I want to go down this second road with you and point out something that you can do to regulate our meat consumption. Let me introduce my four steps of ethical meat consumption. Step one, your shopping matters. Shopping is an activity each of us does frequently. For most of us, it also involves buying meat. So everyone knows these pictures of mass meat production. Those of cooped up chickens, pigs that panic so much that they bite their tails off of each other. Cattle that are standing in mountains of their own shit, right? Everyone has seen at least one of these pictures at some point. And they are disgusting then why do so many people still buy the meat of those poor animals? Our purchase supports this mass meat production, this factory farming that completely ignores the well-being of the animal. The saddest part is everyone can buy the meat of this happy cow we only know from these cliché advertisements. But you need to understand that you won't find it under the near light of a discount supermarket. This cow is standing on a farm raised by a farmer whose biggest concern is not to achieving the greatest level of efficiency, but raising cattle in a species-appropriate way. If you choose this type of meat, you support your local farmer and the ecosystem behind him. Grocery shopping is really a political act, and every purchase of yours strengthens one of the system. Step two, reduce meat waste. We have a waste problem. So you've probably heard that before and most probably dismissed it, but one third of our groceries ends up in the trash. So we really need to talk about it. I think the root of the problem is that we've lost the connection to our food and what is involved in producing it. Imagine you open your fridge, discover a piece of ham covered with mold. How do you feel? Probably disgusted by the malt, but not much else. 
<clears throat> Let me point out the obvious. Behind this piece of ham is a living animal that was born, raised, and killed to produce it. And you throw that away? Imagine you had farmed the field, planted the vegetables, raised the calf, brought it to the slaughterhouse, and watched it die. How do you feel now? As I said, we do this to one-third of our groceries. You don't care? Then let's try the financial angle. Every German throws away groceries worth 400 euros per year. Personally, I have many ideas to better spend this money. But how do we get these 400 euros out of the bin? An easy but effective tip is write a shopping list. By writing this list, think about how often you will eat at home, do you will have guests, and what exactly you want to eat. Check some cookbooks or apps, be creative, and decide up front what you want to cook. And then, buy only what is on the list. Step three, eat every part of the animal. At the risk of repeating myself, heart, liver, tongue, ox mouth, bone marrow are delicious. Think about fried pork ears, dunked in mayonnaise, ox mouth salad with pumpkin seeds, Sign the sizzling bone marrow, medium grilled liver. Doesn't this get you excited? So once you found your trusted farmer this, that I described, why not ask him for some harder liver? I would bet he will be very happy to sell it and he also will offer you some tips on how to prepare it. Some of you may think you need years of experience or must be a trained chef to be able to cook this. To the contrary, if you can prepare roast beef, you also can prepare a heart. Just remove the tallow and the larger tendons. Make sure you don't cut away the red muscle. Fry it shortly in a pan. Put it in the oven for around 10 minutes. Slice it and serve it with some salt. Come on! This is so Instagrammable. <laughs> Even looking at it makes my mouth water. Bone marrow is even simpler to prepare. Just try it out. Or are you almost experienced? Try preparing some liver. Every time you use one of these cuts of the animal, you are improving the balance of our meat consumption and you also contribute to reducing the number of animals are required to feed us. Step four, celebrate eating meat. But first, ask yourself, is it really necessary to eat meat every day on every meal? There was a time when eating meat was luxury. Take my grandma as an example. She is born in 1920 and turned 100 next year. She still vividly remembers when the whole family gathered around the Sunday roast, feeling excited and blessed to be able to eat it. It was a real occasion. Sure. Back then, it was mostly for financial reasons, but if we paid realistic prices for our meat, we won't be able to afford the amounts we consume today. Meat as a cheap commodity is only possible by the broken system that I described. If we buy our meat from local farmer, if we pay the justifiable real price for it, 
which makes we cook less of it, which makes it a special treat. So I invite you to enjoy meat like a good bottle of red wine. You don't open it on any day. You do it consciously and celebrate the privilege to be able to enjoy it. Idly in good company. As I said, I love meat. If we don't change our behavior now, we won't be able to enjoy it in the future. But the good thing is, together, we can secure a future with meat as a culinary option while reducing our CO2 emissions. The path to getting there is by consciously consuming meat, these four steps. Shop responsibly, reduce meat waste, eat every single part of the animal, celebrate eating meat, and most of all, enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you.